My eighth grade science teacher was a Christian and a bigot. He stopped in the middle of class to preach once in a while, but the tangent that I best remember came on the day that he explained, and I believe that this is a quote, fags can't reproduce, so the only way that they can make more fags is by recruiting. This led him to propose the obvious solution for dealing with the fag problem by, again, his exact words, dragging them out in the street and having them shot. He said this to a class full of 14-year-old kids in a public school. Not sure why we needed to fuck traffic up for these executions, but dragging them out in the street, that was apparently part of his plan. See, I don't have a deconversion story. Like most atheists, there isn't some, like, aha moment where I rejected God. What I have is a series of stories like that one. I have a bunch of anecdotes about the religious people in my life using their faith as a depository for their bigotry and their hatred. I have that really nice elderly Christian couple that lives next door to my sister-in-law that tells me that they don't talk to their son anymore because he's gay, and then they look at me like I'm supposed to nod along. I remember the pastor at the mall calling my little sister a whore because she was wearing a tank top. I have the comic book shop where we got together to play Vampire the Gathering, being picketed by more than 100 local churchgoers that told us we were going to burn in hell for rolling the devil's dice. And you add enough stories like that together over a lifetime, you end up with an atheist, apparently. But even with all that shit swishing around in my head every day, I was a passive non-believer. You know, I would tell anybody that asked that I was an atheist and that I thought religion was destructive bullshit, but I wasn't actively dedicating any of my time to countering it. And when it comes to my conversion to an activist, there actually was an aha moment. I, I can even put a date on it, actually. It was May 20th of 2011. That was a Friday, and it was probably about 7.30 in the p.m. Eastern time. Incidentally, the day before Harold Camping told his followers that the world was going to end. Now, they were in town, actually. A, a ton of Camping's acolytes decided to celebrate the apocalypse in modern-day Gomorrah, New York City, and there were signs and shit all over the place, so the overall wackiness and destructiveness of religion was already omnipresent when I hopped on the E-train to get home. And, of course, it's standing room only, so here I am standing by the pole, and to my left, there's a Hasidic dad with his three kids, his, his daughter, her younger brother, his younger sister. The three of them, they're all squeezed together on a bench meant for two, and the little boy, maybe 10 years old, he's reading a book. Now, I got a podcast going. I'm only half ass paying attention, but I noticed that a little boy turns to his sister to show her something in the book or you know, get help with a word or something, and the dad freaks the fuck out. He's loudly chastising his son for showing his sister this book, and it's clear that he is genuinely angry about it. Now, this just struck me as really weird. So later that night, I'm talking to my boss. He's a reformed Jew, so I told him about the incident, and I asked him, I was like, are there books that only boys are allowed to read or something? And he said, yeah, they're called the ones with words in them. Turns out that in many ultra orthodox sects, the girls aren't allowed to read at all. They're not allowed to know anything. They're supposed to just ask their dad and their husband questions and accept whatever answer they're given. He went on to detail some of the far more heinous abuses of women's rights in Hasidic culture, but he didn't have to because that was enough for me. To know that by some unfortunate happenstance of birth, this girl just doesn't get to know shit. She, she was born into the wrong antiquated culture, so she's going to be denied all access to knowledge? She's going to have to lie to her mom and say she's out with her friends when she's actually at the library? That's exactly the opposite of how that's supposed to go. Now, needless to say, I was livid. Hell, I'm still livid thinking about it four years later. It should be illegal to deprive a person of knowledge. A parent shouldn't have the right to sentence their child to ignorance on any level, let alone total ignorance. And it's obviously motivated by the fear that if she acquired even a shred of objective knowledge about the world, she'd realize that her religion was a horseshit scaffolding designed to prop up thousands of years' worth of bigotry. And that was it for me. I was too publicly associated with the company that I worked for to say what I thought under my own name, so before I went to bed that night, I created a new Twitter account, new Facebook profile, all under the name No Illusions. I bought SkatingAtheist.com, started a blog there, and though it took us about a year and a half after that to actually get it started, that was also the night that Heath and I first started discussing this show. In fact, on Twitter, it still has May 21st as my birthday, which is incorrect, by the way, but thanks for all the birthday wishes nonetheless. Now, there's a reason that I'm bringing this all up. We've gotten a few emails in response to our feedback segment last week, specifically the discussion about sexism and men's rights. And virtually all of the feedback has been positive, but there were a couple of people who wrote to say that they were at least mildly sympathetic to the notion that maybe we do devote an awful lot of time to sexism on a show, even when it doesn't directly relate to atheism. And you know what? That's true. That, that's a charge that I will absolutely cop to. Normally, we won't cover a story if it doesn't have a religious angle, but we make a lot of exceptions in This Week in Misogyny and even in the headline segment just when it's like stories about sexism. And that's something that isn't going to change anytime soon. I'm an atheist by way of feminist. 
My feelings about gender equality obviously don't inform my feelings on whether or not there's a God, but they are the primary thing that spurs me to action. You know, if religion was off in a corner somewhere being harmlessly stupid and not interfering with equality, I'd probably more or less leave it alone. Maybe we'd devote a How Bullshit Is It segment to it or something, but it wouldn't be the primary focus of the show. See, there are a lot of great reasons to hate religion, and, and even if you don't hate it, there are plenty of solid reasons to counter it vociferously. But for me, personally, the foremost thing that boils my blood day to day is the way that religion treats women. And second to that is the way they treat the LGBT community, and after that it's the way they treat their own children, and after that it's the way they treat people with other religions, and after that it's the way they treat science, and after that it's the way they treat me. Now, that might not be the order you'd put those things in, probably isn't. I'm not even on your list, probably. You just might hate things that are wrong and pretend to be right. It doesn't matter. Look, I know that there is a lot of contention in the atheist movement about how much time we should devote to this social issue or that one, and that's an important ongoing discussion. But in the end, it doesn't matter what motivates you. We don't need a common impetus or a common tactic or a common voice or really even a common cause. We have a common enemy, and that should be enough to unite us.